Hi, this is Dr. Tori McJunkin. I wanted to talk to you about degenerative disc disease and talk to you about what the condition is, um, how it affects people, and then what some of the uh, treatments for that condition are for people. I'm going to show you on the spine model first because I think that's a good place to start with is the anatomy. This is the back part of the spine. That's called the spinous processes. And this is the front part. These are the vertebral bodies. And you can see the vertebral bodies like this. In, be in between each vertebral body is a disc. Uh, degenerative disc disease is exactly what it sounds like. It's degeneration of that disc. And so the disc itself, instead of being a, a nice big cushion, uh, just like the shock absorber that you have in your shoes, it starts to degenerate and deteriorate. There's two different parts of the disc. Uh, one part is the outside part, and that's called the annulus fibrosis. And it's a real strong, uh, tough part made of collagen. And that holds everything inside the disc. And it's kind of the shock absorber that holds it like in your tennis shoes if you have gel in the shoes it'd be the outside holding the gel inside there the inside of the disc is called the nucleus propulsus and it really is like the gel inside your tennis shoes it has a really high water content and it has it it provides all the cushion so when your spine comes together the disc bulges out a little bit and the gel absorbs a lot of that pressure and then it rebounds so when you're imagine if you're walking or running or lifting something that puts tension and pressure on that disc and that disc responds uh, by doing that just like if you're stepping down on your tennis shoes and that air or that gel that you have in your shoes compresses and then comes back up what happens in degeneration of the disc is the disc itself uh, begins to lose its water content and so the collagen starts to break down in the disc and you can get a couple different things uh, one of them is obviously you get a shrinking and a decrease in height of that disc that causes several different anatomical problems and I'll talk to you about some of those things one of the other things that you can get as well is as that disc deteriorates and the collagen starts to shrink um, you can get small tears that occur in the disc too. If you get tears in the disc, some of the inside material from the disc can leak out and it can irritate the nerves that are on either side there. Now, specifically regarding uh, the shrinking in size, what can happen is it can build up arthritis in the back here because instead of the disc bearing the weight um, as you compress that disc, now you're compressing back here and the posterior aspect or the back part of your spine and those joints have to bear more weight than they did in the past and so just like any joint can get arthritis the small joints in your spine are called the facet joints those joints uh, can build up arthritis and when they get arthritic they can form little cysts or they can just get enlarged so you can have several different kinds of pains that are the result of degeneration of the disc sometimes a degenerative disc uh, doesn't cause any pain at all and so we might get an MRI of somebody and see that they have degenerative disc and you can get it anywhere in the spine, cervical, thoracic, or lumbar, um, and they might not have pain at all from that degenerative disc disease. And in fact, most people as they age, uh, especially when you're talking about 70s and 80 year olds, if you look at an MRI of their spine, they will have degeneration of the disc. Their disc uh, on an MRI in what's called a T2 signal should be white and that just means filled with water content there starts to get black and so something else people will say is black disc disease and that's also another uh, nomer for degenerative disc disease but degeneration of the disc I said it can cause facet pain or arthritis back here and so that's one of the things typically a pain doctor will see is okay is that degeneration causing arthritis type pain if it is we typically will think about medial branch blocks or facet blocks and we'll numb up those little joints and then watch and see if your pain feels better if it does then we think about that radio frequency treatment. Um, if you do that diagnostic block and that doesn't help you, then the disc itself might be causing pain. Oftentimes we'll think about epidural steroid injections first, and those would be in injections into the epidural space here, and you just bathe those nerve roots and the epidural space where all those nerve fibers are. You bathe that with a strong anti-inflammatory medicine and see if that decreases the pain and the swelling and the pain that you might have from the disc. And that also would be one of the treatments for like a disc tear. Now let's say you go through those two steps and you still are having all kinds of pain and those things really didn't help. One of the things that a lot of doctors will think about is called a discogram. And that basically is introducing a needle inside the disc and then pressurizing that disc with contrast. And you can watch and see if the disc itself is leaking out. You can see if it has a disc tear. Um, you can also see if the disc itself is causing the pain. 
because in that procedure you're kind of mildly awake and you can talk to the physician and they'll ask you is this your source of pain is this your source of pain and we try and localize one disc if we can to be in the source of pain so let's say we get through all those steps we've localized it to one or even two disc now what do you do that's the uh, big question that people always have well there's a couple different things you can do in the past uh, spine surgeons and neurosurgeons uh, would fuse that disc so they would put uh, rods and screws that go through this bone here, the pedicle here, and the pedicle here, and they would fuse that so the disc itself wasn't moving anymore. And the idea was that it, was, it wouldn't cause as much pain for somebody. Sometimes in really rare or extreme cases, they'll still do a fusion for that, but we found with research that the uh, fusions for degenerative disc disease, mostly if that's back pain that we're talking about, they don't work very well long term. So a lot of surgeons have stopped doing that. A lot of the payers have stopped paying for that treatment. The other treatment that we'll think about, if you have a tear that's causing pain, there's a procedure called IDET. Um, and unfortunately, this falls under the same category where a lot of payers have stopped paying for this procedure, even though I think there is some good evidence to support it. And if I had a tear in my disc, this is probably the procedure that I would want. But you advance a needle into the disc, a little coil goes in there, and then you heat up that coil and it seals off a tear that you have um, in there and it seals the disc so that you won't get that tear anymore. Another procedure that's really uh, exciting and cool, two research studies. One is for a tear and it's called fibrin glue. Basically, same thing, you introduce a needle into the disc, you inject this uh, gluey material and it seals up the tear. That's a really cool study that's uh, being done across America right now. There's another study that we're a part of here at our practice and there, it's being done in I think 15 different centers around the world, uh, but they're injecting stem cells into a truly degenerative discs that don't have a tear. And the idea is hoping that the stem cells will repair uh, the disc height and regenerate the disc material inside the disc and kind of give somebody a newer type disc. So that's a very promising study as well. What kind of pain do you have with degenerative disc? It kind of depends, uh, but oftentimes people will have what we call axial pain, and that means pain right in the area where their degenerative disc disease is. And for some people that'll feel like a belt of pain around their back if they have degenerative disc disease in the back. Sometimes the pain will radiate down into the buttock area and sometimes around to the hip. Usually that pain does not radiate down below the thighs or below the knees. Um, same thing in the neck. If you have degenerative disc disease that's causing pain up here, it can radiate axially into the neck. It can radiate up sometimes and even down sometimes. Oftentimes that pain though does not radiate down into uh, the arms. What are things that you can do to uh, prevent degenerative disc disease? Well, we know about a couple things and we suspect a couple other things. One of the things for sure is stop smoking. Smoking causes degenerative degeneration of the disc. Um, another thing is uh, to uh, undergo weight loss. And so if you lose weight, it puts le less pressure on the disc and the disc ha just has to work. Um, the, the disc doesn't have to work as hard. Uh, because it bears less weight. Another thing that we talk to people about is sodas, uh, soft drinks, those things they think can deteriorate the disc as well, the collagen fibers in the disc. So that is our uh, little uh, feature on degenerative disc disease. I hope that was really informative for you and I hope if you suffer from degenerative disc disease we can help you figure out what's going on and help you to find the source of the pain and treat the source. Thanks a lot. For more information, please visit us at ArizonaPain.com and on PainDoctor.com.